Hi, my name is Nicholas Baudet, and I'm a graduate student in Professor Allison Flynn's Chemistry Education Research Group at the University of Ottawa. I am happy to present our recent work titled Strategies of Successful Synthesis Solutions, Mapping, Mechanisms, and More. We examined how undergraduate students solve organic synthesis problems in lecture or theory courses. We identified strategies used by successful problem solvers and proposed teaching models and learning activities associated with those strategies. One of the highest level learning outcomes of organic chemistry courses is to develop the skills required to solve synthesis type problems. Although familiar reactions are chosen when designing or choosing synthetic problems, students must recall, use, and integrate knowledge and skills from their previous courses. Many students struggle on these questions, however, although some are successful. We recommend reading about previous educational research studies that informed our work, which are described in our article. We decided to investigate the following research questions. What problem-solving strategies do undergraduate students use when solving synthesis-type problems, and are these strategies being used in the intended manner? What strategies have the highest association with successful answers, and what relationships exist between these strategies? To analyze the nature of students' problem-solving, we based our research on the theory of meaningful learning, which describes that the learner must possess prerequisite knowledge on which to anchor the new knowledge, this new knowledge must be perceived by the learner as relevant, and the learner must choose to relate the new knowledge to previous knowledge. As such, one of the primary limiting factors in problem solving is the quality of the frameworks that are used to relate knowledge. Research participants were in their second semester of organic chemistry at a large research-intensive Canadian university. Institutional Research Board, or ethics approval, was obtained for all stages of this research. We compared successful and unsuccessful answers of novices from the student perspective. An example of a successful and an unsuccessful answer are provided here. In the successful answer, we see a small mistake in choice of reagents in the second step. Although the zinc amalgam is a reducing agent, it would not accomplish the desired transformation. That being said, all other aspects of their pathway are correct, including the key step, an aldol reaction. In contrast, there are more fundamental errors in the unsuccessful answer. The electron pushing formalism is used incorrectly in one step, and the choice of reagents in the aldol reaction would yield the incorrect product shown in red. Our results showed six key strategies that had a statistically significant association with successful answers with moderate to large effect sizes. Successful answers contained an analysis that identified newly formed bonds in the target molecule, identified atoms added to the starting material to form the target, identified key regiochemical relationships, mapped the atoms of the starting material onto the target, used a partial or complete retrosynthetic analysis, and drew reaction mechanisms. When more of these key strategies were used in an answer, the proportion of successful answers was higher. Knowledge of the reactions was not identified as a key strategy because students could know the reactions without having success on a question. This image shows the result of a common error made by students, where the product was identified as symmetrical and a self-aldol reaction using one phenyl propanone was proposed. This was not a unique example. Almost 60% of students who were unsuccessful in solving this problem were able to see the utility of the aldol reaction, but chose the wrong reagents, perhaps due to a surface level analysis of the problem. Using the key problem-solving strategies identified in this study, we constructed a pictorial representation of a sample problem. Atoms added are highlighted in orange, while atoms removed are highlighted in purple. Green arrows indicate bonds that are formed, and red arrows indicate bonds that are broken. Letters are used to label atoms for the purpose of mapping, and finally, numbers are used to identify key regiochemical relationships. These strategies can be shared with students by introducing one strategy at a time, showing how the strategies can be used together, and encouraging students to check their work using mechanisms. The supporting information contains a synthesis problem set that we designed to help students learn this approach. We think the students who use these strategies will be more successful solving synthesis problems, and our future work will investigate this hypothesis. To summarize, our results revealed six key problem-solving strategies that were most often associated with successful answers, in which the solver identified newly formed bonds in the target molecule, identified atoms added to the starting molecule to form the target, identified key regiochemical relationships, mapped the atoms of the starting material onto the target, used a partial or complete retrosynthetic analysis, and drew reaction mechanisms. 
When used correctly or together, these strategies form a representational framework that has a correlation with success rates. The most successful answer used multiple key strategies. We thank the University of Ottawa for funding our work, and we also thank Kelly Galloway for helpful discussions. We also thank the professors and students of Organic Chemistry too for their valuable contributions. His research would not have been possible without them. Finally, thank you for your interest in our research.